A. Hello everyone, I'm Yuichiro Tachibana. Welcome to my talk, Real-Time Browser-Ready Computer Vision Apps with Streamlit. As we know, nowadays Python is very very widely used in many fields, including computer vision, image processing, and of course machine learning. However, in this talk, our main focus is not the model development itself or some theoretical things around it, but we are going to focus on video input and video output on top of such models. This layer is important as it is what we have to consider when we want to create some applications with computer vision or machine learning models, or when we want to create some demos or user interfaces on top of these models. I think one of the most famous, popular, and widely used libraries for that purpose is OpenCV GUI and Video IO modules. I think especially the developers and researchers in the computer vision domain have seen the code snippets like this example many many times, where for example, a cv 2video capture is used to get the input real-time video stream from some camera devices and cv2.im show to display the output image frames continuously in a while loop as a output video stream, output real-time video stream on some desktop GUI window like this example. Although we can create desktop GUI based applications by using OpenCV or similar libraries with this kind of example, however, this approach has some limitations. For example, we cannot simply or easily share such applications with some users, you know, especially non-tech users or remote users, because such applications can run only on your local environments where you already have installed necessary packages or set up necessary environments. So in this talk, I would like to introduce a brand new way to create shareable and easy to use web applications, web user interfaces on top of computer vision or machine learning models by using a Python web framework, Streamlit. I think this new approach can replace some conventional way of creating GUIs using OpenCV because it has some advantages or benefits. So, at this point, I would like to show the demo application that shows what's possible with this new approach. Now, I'm using this app on the web browsers. You know, this is web app. Web app. And this app is now consuming the input real-time video stream from my local web camera like this. And on the backend server, there is some uh, computer vision or machine learning model running which is, in this example, object detection uh, that detects me as a person and this object as a bottle and or this object as a chair, for example. And the object detection result rendered as a bounding boxes on the output video frames are now being displayed on the front end screen like this as a live video stream. And the object detection result metadata are now being displayed in a tabular form at the bottom of this web page, like this. That includes some uh, class name and probability. Okay, and in addition to that, this web app has some interactive web UI components like a slider here, through which users can change model parameters like object detection threshold interactively, even during the execution of the computer vision models at runtime. I think this is, you know, convenient for users because they can control the some parameters or values of the application with the live video stream on the web user interface. So, as I have explained in this example, web apps have some advantages or benefits compared to the conventional GUI applications like uh, OpenCV GUI modules based one. For example, uh, web apps are easier to share, run, and update, which means that web apps can be easily shared with users just by sending the links or URLs, and the users can also easily try out these applications just by opening the links with their web browsers. And whenever you make any update or changes on the applications, the users can access and use the latest versions of the applications anytime. And Web apps can be used on smartphones because, you know, smartphones have web browsers. And as we have seen in the previous example, uh, web apps can have some, some uh, 
interactive, modern, cool-looking, and user-friendly UI widgets that OpenCV-based applications do not have. Until now, I have been explaining why this new approach to create web applications is preferable. And from now on, I would like to explain and demonstrate how we can create such applications and how easy it is. To do so, I would like to first introduce Streamlit. Streamlit is a Python web framework. And its unique characteristic is that users can create, you know, uh, developers can create web applications just by writing only Python code. So it does not require any front-end coding. And it also provides uh, various predefined, ready-to-use UI widgets, UI components, and there are also third-party components that developers can make use of as building blocks to construct rich web applications with a small amount of code. And in addition to Streamlit, we are also going to use Streamlit WebRTC package. That is an extension of Streamlit, or it can also be called as a custom component of Streamlit. It enhances Streamlit to be able to deal with real-time media streams through web browsers on Streamlit applications. So the combination of these packages, Streamlit and Streamlit WebRTC, we can create various kind of web-based computer vision or machine learning applications like the examples in this slide. Since Streamlit and Streamlit WebRTC are only for UI construction and media stream I.O., we can use arbitrary kind of CV ML models as an application backend. So from now on, I would like to provide a step-by-step -step tutorial where we are going to walk through the development and deployment process of, stre of a Streamlit application with real-time video streaming capability. The first thing we have to do in the development is to install necessary packages that, uh, of course, include Streamlit and Streamlit WebRTC. And in this tutorial, we are also going to use uh, OpenCV Python package. I selected the headless version of it because it does not contain the GUI modules, and we do not need that because we are going to use Streamlit and Streamlit WebRTC for that purpose. I mean, the purpose of creating GUIs. And uh, in this tutorial, this OpenCV package is only for its image filter function. So yeah, I selected the headless version that does not contain the GUI modules. Then after installing these necessary packages, let's start coding with an empty file named streamlit underscore app.py. So from this point, I'm going to demonstrate coding here. And uh, please see that in this editor, I have opened an empty file, streamlit underscore app.py. So I'm going to, going to start coding. First, I'm going to import streamlit package as st alias, and I'm also going to uh, call st.title function, like some argument like my first app, for example. By the way, in the Streamlit world, we call these functions as components. So let's say here st.title component is used. And similarly, I'm going to use st.markdown component with a string argument that contains some markdown content like hello, icon, a pack 2022 like this then i'm going to save this file and i move to the shell and uh, run the command streamlit run with an argument pointing to the input file name streamlit underscore up.py so with this command the streamlit server side process spins up and the web app opens up on the browser window like this. And you see that the content of this web page is based on the source file that I have written before. And you see that each element is properly decorated according to the, the components that I have used in the source file. You know, this element is title and this is the markdown component. So, and after that, I'm going to, for example, edit something in the source file, like inserting emojis, for example, here, and save it. After saving the, this change, 
the streamly server-side process detected the file change and showed these two buttons. So I'm click I'm going to click the always rerun button here. So you see that the file no uh page content has been updated to be synchronized to the source file like this to show this balloon emoji. And after that, whenever I make any changes on the source file and save it, the web front end is automatically hot reloaded to be synchronized to the source file content like this. You see that whenever I make some changes to the source file, the web front end is automatically uh, updated. This is the basic development flow of Streamlit applications where all things developers have to do is just to write Python code and the Streamlit command will do all the rest, including, you know, serving and hot reloading the web page like this. So now we have learned how developers can create Streamlit applications. So uh, now we are going to move the development of computer vision apps. I first clean up the previous example and restart coding with the empty file again. So I'm going to first uh, write some code like this. I'm going to import web's RTC, oh sorry, oops, webRTC streamer component from streamlit webRTC package and I'm going to use this component here. As a rule, this streamlit webRTC, sorry, webRTC streamer component requires a key argument as an unique identifier across the script, so please pass an arbitrary string value to that argument. Here, I just put the string literal sample here. Then, uh, after saving this new file content, the as I said, the file page content has been reloaded and a new component appeared on our web page. So let's see what happens after I click the start button here. So, okay. Now we have embedded the real-time video streaming component on our web page just by adding a single line of code, like this. But as you see, this is a very basic version of a video streaming component that does not have any image filter, you know, any video effect. So this is kind of a boring or trivial example. So what we want to do next is to add some image filter to the video stream. To do so, I'm going to define a callback function that accepts one input argument, frame. And at this moment, I will leave the implementation of this callback empty and make it simply return the input argument frame without any processing, like this. And after that, I'm going to, to pass this callback function object to the video frame callback keyword argument of the WebRTC streamer component here, like this. And next I'm going to import AV package as this AV package is now importable because it has already been installed as a dependency of Streamlit WebRTC package. And anyway, uh, please note that, please note here that the import Input argument and returned value of the callback function is an instance of AV.video frame video frame class that is not a numpy array. First of all, what is AV package? The AV package is from this Py AV library that is a Pythonic binding for FFmpeg. And FFmpeg is software to manipulate some media stream or media files like video and audio. And Streamlit WebRTC is using FFmpeg in its internals, so that's why its wrapper library PyAV appears on the interface of the callback function here. So what we have to do next is to convert this uh, frame variable into NumPy array by using a dot to nd array method with a format keyword argument specified as VGR24 that represents three channel color image blob in the color order VGR and eight bits for each color channel, so in total 24 bits. 
example, I'm going to assign the return value to a new variable img, and I'm also going to create a new instance of av.video frame class by using from ND array method that accepts input numpy array and also format keyword argument specified as bgl24 similar array. So now we have obtained the img variable that is numpy array. So now we are ready to implement some image filter inside this callback. In this tutorial, I am going to use uh, use cv2.canny function as a sample image filter here. So I'm going to pass the img variable to the first argument and cv2.canny accept more two arguments as parameters. So uh, I will, at this moment, I will pass two ad hoc fixed values. 100 and 200 respectively. By the way, although I do not explain the details about cb2.canny or the canny filter, uh, but in short, it is kind of a, a edge extraction filter and that is sometimes used in some beginner classes of some computer vision courses, so I selected it as a sample image filter in this tutorial. Alright, so I also have to uh, use cb2.convert color with the color code color gray or gray to bgl because the return value from cb2.canny here is a single channel grayscale image blob that has to, that has to be converted into three channel color image blob by using cb2.convert color like this. Alright, so now I have implemented the image filter with a callback. So oh, let's see what happens with this new code. Okay, now you see that uh, cv2.canny function, you know, the canny filter has been injected into the real time video streaming, video time video stream running on our web page like this. So uh, what's next is, you know, don't you think that it would be great if uh, the users can control some model parameters or values of the application through some UI widgets on the web page? For example, these two parameters of the canny filters that temporarily I assigned just uh, fixed temp ad hoc values. To do so, I'm going to, to use some streamlit components. So first I will import streamlit component again here and I'm going to use streamlit.slider component for okay for example uh, for the threshold one with the minimum value is zero and the maximum value is for example 1000 and the default value is 100 and I assign the return value from this slider component to th1 variable, and I will do the same for threshold 2, like this. And I am going to pass these two variables into the two parameters of the canny filter, like this. And now I'm going to save. So, okay, af just after saving the file, the web page has been reloaded, and two sliders have appeared on the web page. And you see that, and uh, now users can control the parameters of the canny filter by using these sliders, like this. You know, it's kind of a very you know interactive development and interactive usage. So, what's interesting or exciting here is that we could implement a fully functional web-based computer vision applications that has real-time video streaming capability and some interactive UI widgets only with approximately 10 or 20 lines of code. So I think it would be a great deal to switch from the conventional way of creating GUIs using OpenCV to this new approach that is based on Streamlit because that this streamlit based approach does not require additional effort or additional steps but it provides more uh, benefit or advantages so okay and uh, please 
note again here that uh, you can use any models as the application backend, which means that you can put any code inside this callback. You know, you can uh, replace this simple canny filter with any models that you like, no matter how simple, no matter how complicated it is. So you have freedom to create any kind of web-based computer vision or machine learning applications, of course, including some examples in this slide, like a uh, post estimation with media pipe, style transfer, or object detection uh, with some neural networks, or of course, anything, whatever. Okay, now we, we have developed we have developed the application. So what next is to deploy the app to the cloud environment? Although there are various cloud services where the Python runtime is available, especially for Streamlit applications, Streamlit Cloud is the way to go. As its name implies, Streamlit Cloud is a managed cloud service to deploy Streamlit applications that is managed and provided by the official Streamlit team. And the, the deployment process to Streamlit Cloud is quick and easy, so let's see that. At first, please note that I added requirements.txt here that represents the necessary packages to be installed at the booting a process on the cloud environment, although this list does not contain the Streamlit package that will be automatically installed in the Streamlit cloud environment by default. So I would like to add these necessary files to the git work tree and make a commit with these files and push the commit to the remote github repository and uh, I'm going to navigate to the Streamlit Cloud dashboard and click the new app button and select the GitHub repository here and click the deploy button. Then after a couple of seconds, a couple of minutes of the booting a process, Streamlit Cloud will start serving the application that we have developed and pushed from the cloud environment with a globally unique URL so that users can access and use this application from anywhere. Now you see that our application is now running on the cloud environment and can be used through web browsers with a globally accessible URL. Although I have shown the quick demo of the deployment process to Streamlit Cloud, uh, please note that there are some additional things uh, you have to take care of when you actually deploy applications that use Streamlit WebRTC package to some cloud environments, including Streamlit Cloud. I cannot explain all about it in this talk because I do not have enough time, so please see the section about remote host deployment in the official readme when you actually deploy apps with Streamlit WebRTC. Here, I would like to explain one important thing that is necessary for remote deployment. That is adding some network additional, sorry, that is adding some network configurations to the WebRTC streamer component in your app script, like this slide. It looks a bit complicated, but you can just copy and paste it from the official readme. So please do not get afraid about it and please just copy and paste only three lines of code from the official readme into your application code. The reason why such a config is needed is that, in short, Streamlit WebRTC uses a network protocol, WebRTC. In this talk, I can only provide an abstract and simplified explanation about it that might not be precise though. Uh, the WebRTC protocol is different from usual HTTP and in brief, it needs a third-party server located in the global network that is locate, uh, uh, that is called as stun server. When the Python server and client machine are located in different networks, because stun server provides the network information necessary for these two peers to establish the connection over the different networks to connect each other. So let's see the config again. You can see that it contains 
a string stun stun here. So now we see that this config is to use a stun server provided by Google. And now we know why this config is needed. However, even if such necessary configurations have been set up, there are still some situations where the app does not work properly. It is one of the most frequently asked questions, like the app doesn't work or, or the video stream does not start after, even after, even long time after clicking the start button, like this screenshot, where only the loading indicator continues to spin, but the video stream never starts. The most likely reason in such situations is that there are something like, uh, something like firewalls that block uh, media streaming packets on the network path. So the simplest solution for such a case is to just change your network. But of course, I know it is not always possible. So in such a case, we need another third party entity, a turn server that relays the media streams between the peers. I cannot explain about it in this talk due to the time limitation. So uh, again, please see the official readme about it too. Uh, this section of the readme contains some uh, links to the associated materials or some necessary documents. Although this problem does not occur so often, but it's still one of the most fre frequently asked questions. So I talked about it and its underlying mechanism at the last part of this talk. So now we have reached the last two slides. So uh, my main message and takeaway message from this talk from this talk is please enjoy creating real-time media stream applications that can be used on web browsers, which means that the application that can be shared with your friends or the, the, the users worldwide. So and uh, now my username Witfix can be found on GitHub and some SNS and the official Streamlit online forum. So please follow me and contact me for comments, questions, discussions, or feature requests, or something like that, or whatever. And importantly, please put a star to the repository of Streamlit WebRTC package, because the author of the repository the me will be so glad if the number of star grows. Uh, thank you. Thank you for listening to my talk.